Welcome to the Harper Classroom, a series of instructional videos. This video is on business forecasting, time series decomposition using Excel. In other videos, we've looked at the techniques of moving average regression and seasonal indexes with a random trend and seasonal component. In this video, I will introduce a template for the decomposition of a time series. And decomposition means you take the components, decompose them, and put them back together to forecast the future. So let's look at example number one, non-stationary time series with a random seasonal and trend component. Take a quarterly time series, and if we plot the quarterly time series, we see that there's a trend component because it's increasing, and there's a seasonal component because every four quarters it repeats. Because of the seasonal component, I'll block the data where I put a row, a year on every row, and when I put a year every row, then I line up the columns, and the column is a quarter. So the seasonal contribution throughout the year is the same for each quarter. Because of the trend component, I'll take the slope of, of every quarter throughout the years, and that's the seasonal annual slope for the quarterly time series. Because it's a quarterly time series for quarter one, the trend or the slope from one year to the next, then, will be annual slope. The way we calculate the annual slope is regress the time series on time to get your slope. And the slope is the same as the trend for the quarterly time series. Well, now that I have the slope and I have my time series, I can, cal I can calculate my quarterly forecasts. And the way we calculate those, we regress our time series onto time. Now we can plot our forecast, and there's our forecast. But now, let's go a little deeper. Since we have our seasonal slopes here, our seasonal trends, we can average those, and that would be our seasonally adjusted slope, or seasonally adjusted trend. But more precisely, this is the seasonally adjusted slope for the quarterly time series. Well, now that I have my seasonal slope and seasonally adjusted slope, or seasonal trend and seasonally adjusted trend, I can take the seasonal trend, divide by the seasonally adjusted trend, and that'll get me my seasonal indexes. And there's the calculations for each of the seasonal indexes. So let's see how this is done in Excel. Let me bring, let me bring in my Excel spreadsheet. I've typed in the time series. Uh, and so for the slope here, we use the slope function. Well, we regress the time series, comma, onto the time, return. And we want the same time for all the quarters, so we come up here, highlight the time, F4 to freeze it, and we copy that over, and there's our slope. For a forecast, we use the same approach. We take the intercept. Again, re we regress our time series, comma, onto our time. But this time, uh, we add the slope function where, again, we regress the time series onto the time. But this time, since it's the sixth year, we multiply it by year six, and there's our forecast. Again, we want the time to be the same for all four quarters, so we come up here on the intercept term, highlight the time, F4 to freeze it, highlight the time on the slope, F4 to freeze it, return, and now we copy that, and there's our forecasts. Up here, if I take the average, of the uh, seasonal slopes, we can filter out the seasonal component within the slope and get the seasonally adjusted slope or seasonally adjusted trend. For the seasonal index, we take the seasonal value, we divide by the seasonally adjusted value, and there's our index. Now since I want the same seasonally adjusted value for all four quarters, I highlight that, F4 to freeze it, return, and then I copy that down. And there's our seasonal index for all four quarters. And that's how we do that in Excel. So now let's go a little deeper. We have our seasonal time series and our seasonal indexes. And if I divide my seasonal value, which is time series, by my seasonal index, I get my seasonally adjusted value or my seasonally adjusted time series. But I divide every quarter by its respective seasonal index to get my seasonal seasonally adjusted time series. I can plot it, and there's my seasonally adjusted trend value, where each quarterly slope 
from one year to the next year is 40, but the quarterly slope from quarter one to quarter two is 10. So from quarter one to quarter two is 10, but from quarter one in year one to quarter one in year two is 40, uh, and that's my seasonally adjusted slope. I can also take the average of each of these years, and each one of these is going to be 40 annually. I can sum all four years, I mean all four quarters within the year, and that's going to be my annual time series. I take the slope of my annual time series, which is 160. So now, my annual slope of my quarterly time series is 40, but the annual slope of my annual time series is 160, which is 4 times 40. So let's, say, let's see how this is done in Excel. So let's bring in Excel, and I sc scroll down here. Uh, I put in the table. So for quarter one, year one, that's going to equal my seasonal value, which is 60, divided by my seasonal index, return. And I want to do that for all four quarters. Now since I want to use the same seasonal index for all first quarters, I go up, up here and freeze the seasonal index with F4 return. And I do that for all four quarters, so let me do that for all four quarters. Quarter four, F4 return, so I've done it for all four quarters. Now I just copy this down, and there's my seasonally adjusted forecast. Again, my slope is going to be my seasonally adjusted time series regressed onto my time. I freeze my time. And that's going to be my seasonally adjusted annual slope. I can sum every row, and that's going to be my annual time series. I can copy that down, and there's my annual time series over the five years. And then I can copy that over and there's my annual slope for my annual time series. So that's how you do that in Excel. So let's look at example two, a stationary time series with a random and seasonal components. Well, the procedure is very similar. We plot the time series. Now we see we have a stationary time series and we have a seasonal component. Because of the seasonal component, we block it. Because of the stationary time series, we don't take the slope, we take the average, because it's stationary. And these averages then become the forecasts for the next year. And I plot my forecasts. Then I can take the average of my seasonal forecast and get my seasonally adjusted forecast. Then I can divide through, I can divide my seasonal forecast by my seasonally adjusted forecast to get my seasonal indexes. Again, I can take my seasonal time series, divide by my seasonal indexes, and that's going to give me my seasonally adjusted time series. So the procedure is the same, except for the forecast, we take the average. Then I can plot my seasonally adjusted time series, and that's going to be the estimate, which is 100. That's going to be the estimate of my stationary mean. So the average of each quarter is 100. The average of all the values is 100. That's the estimate of my stationary mean. Again, I can sum every row. That's my annual time series. The average of my average time series is 400. That's the stationary mean of my annual time series, which is 400. The stationary, stationary mean of my quarterly time series is 100. So that's business forecasting with a time series decomposition using Excel. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.